Hello, beautiful humanoids. It is I, Christina, here at Fit and Bendy in Los Angeles with part one of our two-part series on how to get your upper back to be more open and flexible. And today we're going to start by releasing a lot of the muscles that tend to hold us in that forward hunched position and working on finding the muscles in our upper back and the back of our shoulders that will open us up and eventually help us with a nice, beautiful upper back bend. All you need for the workout today is a strap and a table. And please like and subscribe if you enjoy this video. And don't forget to turn on your notifications because I'm dropping juicy tidbits about flexibility all the time and you don't want to miss out. All right, everybody, let's get started. We're going to start just by checking in with our posture and our spine. So if you look at yourself from the side in a mirror or take a picture with your phone, what we would like to see in an ideal world, if we were all textbook illustrations, which we are not, is that our ear is over our shoulder, is over our hip, is over our knee, is over our ankle bone in a completely vertical line. Are most of us doing this? Probably not. And do we need to do this to live a rich, healthy life? No, but if you are having pain or issues with your posture, looking for the deviations from that straight line is a good place to start. So what we're looking for is do your shoulders sit in front of your hips and do your ears sit in front of your shoulders? This posture might look familiar, right? So for those of us who, who um, might be in front of a computer a lot or sitting a lot, this forward rotated posture can create a lot of problems. And that's what we're trying to address with this workout to bring the ears and the shoulders back and really get those upper back postural muscles feeling alive and excited. So for our second part, let's just do some movement in our spine and see what it feels like. So we're going to arch and round the spine. And as I'm doing this, I'm trying to keep my head still. I'm trying to keep my knees still and really get the movement to happen in this sort of lower to mid part of the spine. And what I find is that when I arch this direction, it's much easier to get movement in the lower part of my back. And when I round, it's much easier to get movement in the upper part of the back because that's how the spine is built is to go backwards with the lower back and forwards with the upper back. And that's all great and fantastic, but we do want to counter that natural proclivity a little bit by creating some new muscle relationships so that we don't end up exaggerating those curves, which can lead to poor posture, tightness, pain, and uh, a hard time doing backbends if that's one of your life goals. So we're just checking in here and I want you to see what your spine feels like. It might feel great bending backwards in the upper back. Everybody's different and it's just good to know your body and what your body feels like and what it needs. All right. So once we've done that little hello check-in, we're going to start to find and develop our relationship with and encourage the muscles in our upper backs that are going to bring those shoulders back and open up the chest and maybe even get that spine going into a little back bend. For this, you're going to need your strap or belt and we're going to hold it in both of our hands out in front of us. You want to be about one and a half times your shoulder width apart with your arms straight. You can go a little wider if you're uh, tight, but you want to kind of be able to create some tension here. The other thing that you want is as we're pulling that strap apart and you're holding it, extra grab with your pinky fingers. So the rest of my fingers are almost kind of relaxed and my pinky fingers are really holding onto that strap and the pinky fingers connect up to our upper backs in a just direct line of nerve and muscle. So by squeezing with the pinky fingers, it's gonna help you feel those muscles a little bit more. And I'm just gonna gently pull that strap like I'm trying to rip it in half, keeping my spine straight and my shoulders down. I'm gonna bring that strap down until it touches the front of my thighs. Once it gets to the front of my thighs, I'm gonna to try to bring my shoulders down away from my ears to slide the strap as far down my thighs as I can. I'm trying to reach my knuckles to the floor without leaning forward, right? I'm keeping my spine still. This is only from the movement of my shoulders. So let's just do that a couple times so I can relax and I can slide the strap down. I can relax and I can slide the strap down. We're gonna stop with that strap slid down. From here, I'm gonna to try to bring my hands back behind me. 
Now they can't go there because they're holding onto the strap, which is pressed into my thighs. And because of the laws of physics, that means that my arms are going to stop right next to my hips. But the effort of bringing my arms back behind me inspires my upper back muscles to work. See if you can find that activation. You want to feel this effort in the muscles underneath your shoulder blades, the back of your armpits, the back of your shoulders. Now I'm not letting my chest pop forward, right? I'm not trying to move my rib cage. I'm not trying to squeeze my shoulder blades together right now. I'm trying to keep my spine basically still as I activate those muscles. This is an isometric contraction. That means I'm contracting the muscles without moving. And isometrics are really good for developing the relationship with muscles and they're really good for our postural muscles because our postural muscles don't necessarily need to be able to lift tons of weight, right? They need to be able to hold us up all day. So they need to be able to do a mild contraction for a long time. So that's what we're going to be working on with this. We're trying to hold this position for a while at a low level of effort. So even at this low level of effort, I can get a little bit of shake in my muscles as I try to challenge them. I'm still thinking slightly about pulling that strap apart. So I'm creating that tension with the outside of my shoulders and my upper back. One thing you want to check in with here is, is your neck trying to do this work? Right? So let's start to turn our heads right and left. And what we want is to be able to easily move our head and neck through our full side to side range of motion while keeping that contraction in the upper back. If you start to notice that your shoulders are going with you or starting to rise up to try to follow your ears, then that's a good indication that working to separate your neck muscles from your upper back muscles will be part of your adventure. Let's come back to center. We're going to hold this for 10 more seconds. Make sure you're still breathing evenly. This shouldn't affect your breathing at all. Just feeling those upper back muscles for five, four, three, two, one, and release. Oh, hello, upper back. So nice of you to come to the party. Hopefully feel those muscles working. Now we're going to take our strap and we're going to lift it up in front of us. And I'm going to just move my hands out a little bit wider for this. Um, we still want to be squeezing with the pinky fingers though, and we still want to be creating that tension. And we want to make sure our hands are a little bit below our shoulders. So make sure your shoulders aren't coming up here. Think about pressing slightly down with the shoulders as if we were still reaching for the floor. And from here, we're going to do some rows. So I'm going to bend my elbows opening them out to the side, bringing my arm back, trying to touch the strap to my chest on the lower side of the chest. So not up here so much as down here, creating that openness through the front. And I'm squeezing together in the back and extending forward as far as I can without hunching in the spine. So just pulling the shoulder blades apart. And as I do this, my shoulder blades are moving together and apart without any movement from the spine. So in the last exercise, I got my upper back muscles to work without any help from my neck. And now I'm trying to get those postural muscles to work to keep my upper back still while I move my shoulder blades. And this is all part about teaching each muscle group what it does and getting it to do it on its own without help from its neighbors. And this kind of separation of powers increases the effectiveness of our muscles and enables us to have more range and enables us to see like where our sticking points are. What are the muscles that need the extra work? So if it's hard to feel your shoulder blades moving back and forth, that could be a great thing to focus on in terms of finding better upper back health. Let's do one more of these. Pull in and extend out and relax and shake it out. Cool. So now we're going to try to use this, bringing it all together to create a little bit of upper back extension. So this is flexion going forward, extension going backwards. So we're trying to get the upper back to go in the opposite direction from what usually feels natural for it. You're going to need your table for this one. And I'm again holding onto my strap. Now for this one, you definitely do not want to be narrower than your shoulder. So at least shoulder width apart. If uh, you feel kind of tight, maybe a little bit wider, totally fine. And I'm going to lean forward slightly to rest my fists 
on the table in front of me, a little bit of a step back. So I want a little bit of weight pressed into my arms. My arms are straight. And again, I'm finding that pinky finger and I'm squeezing with it and I'm trying to pull the strap apart. I'm gonna externally rotate my arms and think about creating space for my chest and press those palms down into the table. And as I'm doing this, I want to feel that my armpits and my upper back muscles and the muscles underneath my shoulder blades are working. And those muscles are working like I'm trying to get taller by pushing my hands down. Now make sure that you're not starting to lift your chin to make that happen. The chin stays neutral and the neck's still relaxed. And again, we're trying to do an isometric hold here. So I'm trying to pull the strap apart as I press down and I'm using that to open my chest up just a little bit more. Now, notice if you're starting to arch in your lower back, not what we're looking for. You can even soften the knees a little bit here if you find your lower back is wanting to do a lot of the work. Keep those elbows locked out straight. When the elbows soften, this can end up feeling almost like a push-up, which is not what we're going for. We're really trying to feel that the work is happening in the upper back. If you want, you can try to slide your hands out a little further without leaning forward to get a little bit deeper into the armpits. And we're just gonna hold here for another 10 seconds. Again, waking up those upper back muscles. Put that weight into your hands, press the hands down to feel like you're trying to launch yourself up out of the table for five, four, three, two, one, and let go. Shake it out. So hopefully that gave you a really nice activating feel in these muscles underneath the shoulder blades, the armpit, this whole area here. We're gonna try to now use those to actually create that extension, shall we? This time, no strap. Just spread out your hands and place them flat on the table. And I'm gonna take a slight step further back um, because this sort of leaning forward feeling can actually make this a little bit easier to find. And even though I don't have the strap, I'm still thinking about sliding my hands apart a little bit and finding external rotation, which means I'm turning my upper arm bone to the outside. That's gonna turn the elbow pit to face forward a little bit, but I'm still keeping my whole palm pressed down. So I'm trying to not go to the outside, to the pinky finger side of my hand. And hopefully that will create an openness through the front of the body. And we're gonna, we're gonna capitalize that on that a little bit more later. Now press the hands down and we're gonna try to find those upper back muscles and use them to lift the chest up towards the chin. Now, this is not gonna be a very big movement, especially if it's new. And then relax it down. Keeping those elbows straight, right? Because if I bend my elbows, I can use my arms to kind of pull myself forward. We want those elbows to be nice and straight. The other thing to look out for here is using your neck. So if I try to bring my chest to my chin by lowering my chin to my chest, well, I'm just using my neck muscles, which is a thing. It's just not the thing we're trying to do right now. So pick a spot directly in front of you, stare at it. Don't move your head at all vis-a-vis -vis that spot. And just think about the chest coming up to the chin as the chin stays still and feel those upper back muscles working. We're trying to get the sternum, this bone right here, to lift above the shoulders. And I'm tr still trying to slide my hands apart. I'm pressing my pinky fingers down. I'm pushing my whole hand down into the table to help inspire those back muscles to work. We're gonna do two more of these, and then we're gonna stop and we're gonna do one of those isometric holds to try to reinforce this work. On this next one, go ahead and lift that chest, and we're just holding. Pinky fingers are pressed down, arms are straight. Make sure your head and neck is relaxed. You're not looking up or down or side to side, and we're gonna try to lift, lift, lift that chest. You wanna make sure that you're not collapsing your shoulder blades together. Think about reaching your fingertips forward. Feel those muscles through your armpits, through your upper back. Now, if this is feeling pretty accessible to you and you feel like you wanna add an extra level of challenge, only if you wanna do that, you can soften the knees and try to tuck the pelvis under. And this is gonna take all of the stretch out of that lower back and make 
the upper back work. So you're trying to keep your upper back lifting without any arch in the lower back. And we're gonna hold here for 10 more seconds. Make sure that you're breathing. Hold for five, four, three, two, and one. And shake it out, shake it out. Hi, upper back. So nice to make your acquaintance. So that was our wonderful introduction to upper back extension. Now we're gonna take a moment to give a little stretch to three muscle groups that tend to restrict that movement. So if that felt really for you, hopefully one or more of these stretches will help to open that up. So we're gonna start with the pecs. The pecs attach to the arm bone here and then run across and attach to the sternum. The pec minor kind of comes over your shoulder like a little backpack muscle. And when these are tight, they do this, which is obviously the opposite of what we're hoping for right now, right? So we're gonna see if we can open that up. So grab that strap again and hold it out in front of you. And this time you wanna go about two shoulder widths apart. Uh, one way to tell how far apart it is, is if you put your one fist on your sternum and extend the other arm out all the way straight, that's about how far apart you want your hands to be when you bring them down in front of you. I don't like to have the strap twisted though. All right. Soft knees, extend those arms out, squeeze with your pinky fingers, create that tension in the strap, just like we did with the first exercise. But for this one, we're start, gonna start to bring our arms up overhead and bring them as far back behind us as we can, trying to feel that stretch through the pecs and then drop it back down. Now, as you do this, there's something really important for you to keep an eye on because our pecs are really smart and like to cheat themselves out of the stretch. If you get up towards the top and you notice that your arm is rotating like this with your armpit going out to the side, what's that? That's the pec pulling your shoulder forward and not stretching. Eh, very smart of the pec, I think, but we want it to stretch. So as you bring your arm up overhead, make sure that your armpits stay looking forward, even if you don't go back as far that's totally fine. And see if you can feel that resistance from the pecs, right there through your chest, through the front of your shoulder. That's where the stretch is going to be. So don't worry about how far it goes. Maybe your arms go this high. Great, this is super awesome. Wherever they are today is wherever they are today. Just try to notice how those upper back muscles are working here to create this lift without letting the pecs take over and contract against the stretch. And see if you can feel your pecs through the stretch. All right, on this next one, you're gonna lift the strap up, stop with it up overhead in whatever level of extension works for you, and we're gonna start to bend the elbows, keeping that tension in the strap so much that your arms start to shake a little bit. Lower it down till it gets to the top back part of your head and then extend it back up. It's kind of like doing a pull-up, but you get to keep your feet on the ground. And every time you bend your elbows, you're trying to create width across the front of the body. And if you feel like you wanna go a little deeper, you can think about bringing your elbows slightly forward and your hands slightly back into a little bit of external rotation. And that will deepen that pec stretch even more. If you feel nice and open, you can even lower the strap to your upper back and extend it back up. But if you choose to do that, you need to make sure that your head and neck are in line. So I'm not hunching forward and I'm not rounding my shoulders forward and letting those pecs get bossy and pull the shoulders forward. So it's fine to stop at the top of your head. All of that is groovy. Find what works for your body today. All right, and extend back up. Now this time we're gonna bend the elbows and we're gonna stop with the strap right there at the back of the head. And we're gonna try to externally rotate, lifting that strap away from the back of the head. Now this is gonna really work the muscles in the backs of your shoulders, sort of back of the shoulder armpit feeling. If you're feeling super hunchy and struggling with this, bring the strap a little bit in front of your head and feel like you're putting on your Karate Kid headband. So you're gonna just bring it back to touch your forehead and lift away. And this is also a great way to do it. 
So whichever way is working for you, the important thing is that you feel that engagement through the back of the shoulders, and that's gonna help you get this nice stretch in those pecs, especially the pec minor, which is often one of the muscles that gets tight when we have that forward rounded posture and we sit looking like vultures at our computers all day. Let's do two more of these and then stop and hold that strap away. Squeeze with those pinky fingers, pull the strap apart, open up the chest, big breath, check in with your neck, should be still relaxed. Check in with your back, make sure it's not arched. I say to myself a lot and extend those arms up to the ceiling and lower them down. Mm. Hello, pecs. Nice and open. So hopefully that created some more openness through here. If that was one of your problem areas, it might make this upper back extension thing a little easier for you. But let's go ahead and check in with part two of our muscle groups that can create tension. And that's our obliques. So the muscles through the side of our waist. And these muscles attach to the bottom of our rib cage and they do need to lengthen for our upper back to get extension. And so we're just gonna give them a nice, gentle little side bend, which they really like. So the strap can be helpful for this, just as a way of stabilizing us. I'm gonna open my feet out to a, about hip width or more apart. The wider is going to be a little bit easier. Same with the hands. Wider hands is gonna be easier. Shoulder width is going to be more challenging. Don't go narrower than shoulder width for now. Keep it about shoulder width or wider. Squeezing with the pinky fingers, straight arms, reach those arms up overhead, just like in the last exercise. And we're just going to think about lifting that left fist up like you're trying to punch the ceiling and then leaning slightly to the right. And we're gonna say hello to that left oblique and just pull back up and reach that right fist up for the ceiling and we're gonna to lean to the left and try to feel the stretch on the right side of the body. And here we're just gonna go in a gentle back and forth. And don't worry about pushing this. We're not trying to go to your absolute deepest side bend, especially not on the first couple of reps. Just allow those muscles to open up naturally as we repeat this movement back and forth. So we're not trying to stress our bodies out with this movement. Um, one thing that's really nice to do with this is to make sure that you can talk, or if you are enjoying to sing, singing through this exercise is a fantastic way of making sure that you are not holding your breath and using your diaphragm to support your body as this happens. So um, you don't have to have a good voice, just try singing. <laughs> Let's do a couple more of these. And every time, see if you can just go a little bit deeper. One more to the right. And one more to the left. And I'm just trying to challenge my muscles, but not in a way that's going to make them unhappy or uncomfortable. Just saying hello. And let's lower those arms down. Shake it out, shake it out. So we just talked about the diaphragm, and that is our next muscle group that we're going to say hello to here. And the reason for that is that the diaphragm can be a very big influence on what our upper back is doing, on our whole body, right? Our diaphragm is our breathing muscle. It's a big, flat plate of muscle that attaches to our ribs, cuts straight across, and then attaches to our spine. So it basically cuts us in half right about here. And it helps with breathing, but when your postural muscles are not working optimally, sometimes that diaphragm can be working to hold us up, and then it gets really tight and angry, and then it can restrict our ability to move and breathe, which obviously is suboptimal. So one of the things that we can do is to just give it a little massage. So for this, I recommend leaning forward. If you have a hard time with this, you might wanna just sit down so you're a little bit more relaxed. And we're gonna take our fingers and we're gonna stick our fingers underneath our rib cage. And you wanna feel like you're grabbing your rib cage. If you have long nails, this doesn't feel great. Sorry. And we just wanna give it a little bit of a massage. Now, if you're having a lot of difficulty getting your hands underneath your ribs, or if like you touch something, it feels like like super painful or it makes you want to vomit, it probably means that you have a really tight diaphragm. And doing some breathing exercises, doing deep breathing, learning how to do diaphragmatic breathing, and I will be making a video on that soon, is going to be really valuable for you in increasing your flexibility, improving your posture, improving your cardio, everything. It's just really important to have a good relationship with your diaphragm. But this little massage 
can be a good start. Just be very gentle with yourself. You don't want to go digging around in there and making yourself cry and feel miserable. Just a gentle hello to acknowledge that your diaphragm exists and that you care about it and you're thinking about it. And you want to start to feel it, to have a relationship with it, know where it is, what it feels like. And touching a muscle, this is kind of a hard muscle to touch, right? But touching a muscle can really help you to work on building that relationship. And then go ahead and let your arms drop and just take a big breath in. And a big breath out. And see if you feel just a little bit more movement there, a little bit more movement in that muscle and in this area of the body as we get the diaphragm to release. All right, so now we've released the pecs, we've released the obliques, we've released the diaphragm a little bit, and now we can see if we can get a little bit deeper into that upper back extension. And we're gonna start by doing a twisting exercise because our upper back has an easier time finding twist than extension. So if we kind of cheat into that extension through a twist, it helps us. So go ahead, um, just put your strap to the side. We're not going to need it again. Face your table. And we're going to put both hands on the table out in front of you. And for this one, we're going to take a few steps back and drop our armpits down to the floor. Now, we have not really warmed up our shoulders fully. So this is not about getting the deepest shoulder stretch in the world, right? Just go ahead and stop at a point where you still feel pretty comfortable. And to start, I'm going to take my right arm and I'm just going to drop it down towards the floor and I'm going to let it relax nice and long and I want to think about the shoulder reaching long out of the shoulder socket like my fingertips are going to brush against the floor and from here we're going to start to rotate to the right and I'm opening my arm out to the side I'm going to reach out as long as I can so I'm trying to not let my shoulders hunch in towards my body keeping my hips still I'm trying to open up to the right side and reach up towards the ceiling. I've got a lot of strength in my left armpit holding my body up as I breathe into my right rib cage to twist a little further and lower back down and just let that arm dangle. Let's try it again. Reaching for the floor, feel the muscles along the right side of your spine that make this rotation happen. So we wanna make sure again that we're not pressing in. I wanna feel like both of my shoulders are reaching long out of the shoulder socket. My arms are as long as I can get them. Reaching for the ceiling, try to make sure your hips are square and lower back down. One more time. Opening out to the side. Breathe into that right rib cage. Use your breath to find a deeper twist here. Hold for five, four, Three, two, one, and lower back down. Whew, shake out that right arm. And let's do the same thing on the other side. So right hand comes up, and now the left hand's coming down. And again, I'm trying to make sure that my hips are square so I'm not letting myself rotate from the lower body. I'm reaching my left arm down for the floor, long out of the shoulder socket. And then I'm going to start to rotate to the left. And I'm reaching out super, super long with that left arm going up towards the ceiling. Ooh, left side is not as good on me. Breathe into that left rib. And then lowering back down towards the floor. You will find, just like everything else, that your two sides have different characters. And it's worth investing in going a little bit more on your less optimal side. Let's go ahead and rotate. Find that reach, reach, reach for the ceiling. Big breath in and lower back down. This last one, we're going to hold it just a little bit longer and open up to the side. Feel those spinal muscles, those rotational muscles, same muscles that are going to help you find your back bend. Hold here for five, four, three, two, one, and lower it back down so yummy all right shake out those arms come on back up to standing so hopefully that helps you find those muscles along your spine because now we're going to use them the muscles underneath the shoulder blade those armpit muscles upper back muscles to open up the chest just like we did at the beginning but we're going to see if we can take it a little bit deeper now that we've done the rest of our warm-up so 
hands are flat on the table. I'm going to take a little bit more of a step back here, pressing the hands down. Let's try to find that upper back extension, lifting your chest to your chin and drop it back down. Now for these first ones, I'm not worrying too much if my lower back is arching. I'm not trying to make it arch, right? But I'm letting it kind of come along. The important thing is I'm trying to minimize the space between the chest and the chin without dropping my chin. I'm also trying to not look for the ceiling as I lift. The neck is staying neutral and I'm using my upper back muscles. Keep pressing your hands down, feeling like you're trying to slide your palms apart. Little extra press with those pinky fingers to inspire those upper back muscles. See if you can feel how they work here. Let's do one more of these. We're going to hold at the top. So press the hands down, lift the chest. And then if you want, you can try to tuck the pelvis under taking the lower back out of it, lifting the chest towards the chin, and we're gonna find that nice isometric hold. So we're just gonna hang out here for a little bit. As you breathe, think about your breath helping your chest lift, but you should be able to talk, sing, have a whole conversation, sing opera, if that's your thing, in this position. Again, tuck the pelvis under and lift. 10 more seconds here, keep breathing. Feel that work in the back for five, four, three, two, and one. And relax the spine, drop the arms, shake them out, shake them out. And just like we did at the beginning of our session, let's find a little bit of spinal movement. Moving the spine, just however comes naturally, and see if you can get a little bit more extension and lift in the upper back than you did before. If it just feels more accessible, if it makes more sense in your body, because that's really what we're going for. It's just that does this movement make sense in your body? Does your body know which muscles to work? Can you get it to move? And if you stand and again, check in with a mirror or take a second picture, does your spine position look different? Does your shoulder position, ear position look different as you get a little bit more extension in your upper back? And if you're struggling with your posture, I do have a whole video on how to stand up straight correctly without hurting your back that's linked. So check that out. And it's really important to continue consistently working on this because at first it can feel like a lot of struggle, not a lot of movement, but the more that you do it, the more accessible it gets. So if you want to keep on going with this, please do subscribe to my channel and hit your notification button. I have new stuff coming out all the time and that way you'll keep on top of it. I also have a, a, paid video club where we have longer workouts and you can interact with me and ask all sorts of questions and we do Q and A's and have community groups. So I would love to see you there. All that is linked in the description. All right. Thank you so much, everybody for tuning in. I love you so much. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your questions. And as always, happy bendings.